Hi, I'm Andrew. I'm a contractor and owner of the Final Cut Home Improvement. Today I'm going to show you how to use this Ryobi 18 volt cordless drill. Stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm going to give a live demonstration on how to drill a hole and run a screw into a board with the Ryobi drill. In this video I'm going to go over how to power it, how to put bits in the chuck and how to control the speed. First thing I'm going to talk about is how to power up your drill. When you purchase one of these it will come with a charging dock so once the light is green you're charged so you're going to take it out of the charging dock and insert it into the drill. These come out by pushing on the two tabs, one on each side, squeeze them both at the same time and pull and then it will be charged from the charging port then insert it back in the drill and push once it clicks, you're good to go. Next, I'm going to talk about how to put something in the chuck. The chuck is what holds whatever bit you want to use for whether it be drilling a hole or running a screw in. It, um, it works the same way. So I'm going to put this Phillips screwdriver bit into the chuck. By, I'm going to start by rotating this outside collar. If you notice, there's three teeth in there, and as I spin them, you can see them getting smaller and you just want to spin it in whatever direction will make the teeth opening large enough to fit what you want to put in there so keep turning okay that now it goes in I'm going to, now I'm going to go the opposite direction and tighten it keep spinning this collar until the teeth all clamp down on the shank of this bit once you got it in there a little bit tight you're going to take your hold it by the handle here and then just tight as you can now your bit's in and it works. Same thing applies for a drill bit. To take it out, you're just going to go to the opposite direction to loosen it, spin it loose, and then take whatever size drill bit you want to put in there, and you're just going to rotate this collar until it goes in. See how it went in? And then tighten it up. You're good to go. Now I'm going to talk about the speeds. Uh, this drill, like many, has uh, one and two, two, spins like that, one, spins a lot slower. Difference is, when it's in one, you're going to get a lot more power, a lot more ability to turn, so you have to hold a lot, hold on to it a lot tighter. 90% of your drill needs will be done in the faster setting. Um, you can also, just because it spins faster, you can slow it down by just pulling the trigger in slightly. Or if you pull it back all the way, you're at full speed. The last thing I'm going to talk about is the clutch. The, the clutch is basically a way um, that you can control the power of the drill. You can back down on the power of the drill by, by rotating this collar here. So if you see there I'm at four, it will have a very limited amount of um, force, but then if I turn it up, you can go to 20 and then it will be a lot stronger, but you can dial it so that it won't snap off the head of a screw. Um, most of your drilling applications though, you'll want to rotate it until you see where the arrow is lined up with this drill bit symbol. That's That will be the setting you'll want to keep it in for 90% of your tasks that you're going to do with this drill. But if you do find that maybe you're running screws with, in with it and they're breaking the heads off or it's stripping, you could back off on the on the torque a little bit by rotating this collar but generally speaking that that setting is best you probably clicked on this video because you wanted to see how to operate a drill so I am going to actually drill a hole in this board and run a screw into it so we'll start out by drilling a hole so I'm going to take my standard drill bit any kind of drill bit will work you can put it in the chuck Rotate it till it's tight. Give it a good squeeze. Now we're good. So you want to overhang your material over the edge so you don't drill into your nice surface. Just come down, place the drill, and you want to be careful to make sure that you're not leaning this way, that way, this way, or that way. With practice, you can you'll get the feel of it. But you want to keep the bit perpendicular to the surface. So once you have it where you want the, the hole to be, the center of the hole, you're going to just 
just come in, just give it a couple of light squeezes, that gets it started. Sometimes they'll they'll walk around, so you just want to kind of really just jog it like that, pull the trigger a couple of times till you get it uh, dent in the board, and then you can spin it at full speed. And that's it. I'm gonna drill another hole. And this time I'm gonna give you a little pro tip that may not have been as obvious when I drilled the first one. When you are drilling material, especially thicker material, uh, you'll get it started, and I'm gonna go real slow, but I don't. you don't just want to let the drill spin and plow all the way through the material. You can do that, but it's gonna overheat the tip of your drill bit, they'll get dull faster, and then that when it when it when you run through without backing it out it also not only does it get your bit hot but the bits can sometimes wander and you, you'll get a crooked hole so whenever you're drilling get in the habit of push pull out some chips and then come back out a little bit you don't have to come back all the way um, this board's so thin that I did but as long as you come back so that you're pretty much out of the hole these spiral flutes are gonna extract the chips so that you have a clean path and that's gonna keep your hole um, accurate, not crooked, and it'll reduce splintering and give you a better overall outcome. So, push, tip, push, push. You'll notice a lot of times as you break through the hole, it's pretty normal for um, for these to want to grab a little bit. So just kind of hold on tight. But you should be holding on to this as tight as you can throughout the process. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is run a little um, cabinet screw into this board. Um, it, but this same technique would apply regardless of the screw size. Uh, so you want to match the right type of bit to the type of screw head that you are using. Most common is Phillips number two. So we're just going to put this into the chuck, <coughs> tighten it up, and then wherever you want your your screw to go. You can start by seating the tip of the bit into the head of the fastener. See how it's on there? Then a lot of times you just take your finger and kind of hold it on there because a lot of times it'll fall off. Let's say you want to go right here, that little mark. Get it on there and then once you get it straight up and down um, you can kind of come back and then maybe use your other hand to steady the drill like this. kind of. And then you're just going to slowly pull the trigger. And then you'll see, as when I pulled the trigger, it started to go into the material. See how it's kind of threading in? And then you can speed up. You don't, you don't want to get too fast. Sometimes if you do, this tip will spin and it will egg out your slots in the fastener. Fastener metals are softer than these. So you have to be cautious not to strip them out. Um, and if it is stripping it out, you can still run it. You just want to slow down a little bit. So. And that's it. If you want to take a screw out, you'll want to put the drill in reverse. So you can do that by pushing on this little tab right here. So I slid it that way. I'll show you another angle. Forward forward, reverse. You can kind of see the little arrows pointing out. See how the arrow is pointing out there? That backs the screw out. And then if you want to run the screw in, push it in. So let's take the screw out. I'm in reverse. Don't pull the trigger until the tip of the bit is seated into the screw head. Once it's seated, let's pull the trigger. And sometimes they will get stuck in there and you just pull them out with your fingers. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel for more home improvement tips and tricks. And I will see you next time.